Damn it, Colonel. What were you thinking? That cup had all the nano machines in it. You better catch it. You better. Oh, you fucking idiot. Oh, shit. You're pretty good. Age hasn't slowed you down one bit. Who's this skinny little bitch? Wait, you don't play a snake in this game? Wow, I, I, I feel so betrayed. This would never have happened if Kojima was still here. So the only controls in this game for the most part are just moving and pressing enter to navigate the menus. So in theory, you could play this game on an Atari joystick. Uh, okay, so uh, let me just give you a little backstory. So uh, Konami was just doing their thing. You know, smoking crack or whatever, abducting children and sacrificing them to the Antichrist. When uh, this company comes along and makes this game called Never Stop Sneakin'. Now, um, this is like a Metal Gear Solid inspired sort of thing. It is fucking hilarious and if you don't play it, you're, you're a complete idiot. I hope you, you gotta play it. Just play it. Okay? <laughs> this is easy. This game is fucking baby food, man. Fucking bullshit. How do you see me? Will you get the fuck out of here? Not a lot of people know this, but Phantom Bane actually comes from Phantom Pain. My entire YouTube channel was originally going to be dedicated almost exclusively to Metal Gear content, because the truth of the matter is, Metal Gear is extremely close to being my favorite game series, period. I discovered very quickly that even though I loved this franchise, I wanted to branch out and do other things, like Mario hacks and reading troll pasta. Today's episode is called Five F***ing Nights at Fredizzle Fazberry's Pizzatorium. And, uh, I figured I just needed to read this before all the Five Nights at Freddy's hype just died, like, out of nowhere, so... Gold. Needless to say, Never Stop Sneakin' has given me an opportunity to get back to my roots as a YouTuber. Part of me wants to say that this game is a love letter to Metal Gear Solid fans, but in reality, it's more of a Valentine's Day card that you get on April Fool's Day. From the shitty unfiltered PS1 textures to the way it makes light of the political overtones, this entire game is a joke. This joke hurts and heals at the same time. For one thing, it's making fun of a game franchise that's very near to many of us. But at the same time, in the era of Metal Gear Survive, which is an uncompromising molestation of decades of excellent games, In areas where we can support you, the map will also show your current position. However, this does not apply outside of these areas. There, you'll have to study the lay of the land to figure out where you are. The situation we- it's clear that Never Stop Sneakin' has a much better understanding of what the fan base responds to, and it's confident enough in this understanding that it has the balls to make fun of it. And that's the other thing, this game is fucking funny. You can't go through any dialogue without compulsively smiling. My demands are simple. Reinstate me as president forever, or lose every president forever. Furthermore... He goes on for another four hours, but it gets pretty boring after that. Go look at that teeny tent, it's so quaint. If you want to stop me, you would need like 12 of those. 12 tents. Guildenstern, you're a madman. The gameplay is fantastic. There's a certain majestic quality to games whose core mechanics are incredibly simple and yet immensely satisfying, and this is most definitely one of those games. For the most part, all you do is walk around and all the context-sensitive actions are automated. If you get seen while you have a bullet, the guy who saw you automatically gets shot. If you walk up behind him and get close enough, he does a stealth takedown. This makes for a relatively easy game compared to the Metal Gear Solid series, but what's incredible about it is that through its sheer immediacy and the incredibly satisfying sound effects, it just doesn't get boring. The Metal Gear Solid series was immensely challenging on higher difficulties, but sometimes because the core mechanics are much more complicated, it can feel inconsistent and a bit sloppy and the end result is incredibly frustrating, leading you to question who just fucked up here, you or the game. What the fuck? What? What the fuck? What? I want to- What the fuck? I know this because I actually got the Platinum Trophy in both Metal Gear Solid 4 and 5. That shit fucking traumatized me. And those are the easiest games in the series. I tried to do the same for MGS2 and it was not happening. Never Stop Sneakin' is obviously not even in the same league as the Metal Gear Solid series in terms of difficulty. 
Because of its very minimalistic take on the formula, it can almost be thought of as grade school level Metal Gear. In the same way that basic arithmetic eventually builds up to calculus, you could start with this game and work your way up to something like Metal Gear. But it's not so easy that an experienced player wouldn't have fun. There are only a handful of games that manage to be uncompromisingly fun while still being relatively easy, and most of them belong to the Kirby franchise. So, tell me. You have $10. What would you rather do? Would you rather get this badass game? Or would you rather get another stupid save file for Metal Gear Survive? Good night, everybody.